can't buy It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. And you know, Ron, I like I've had a, a lot of and inspired by the the Israel tech scene, the Israel business series. And so I've had uh, um, Luis Navone of Mobileye. He talks about the Mobileye journey of being acquired by Intel for thirteen point two billion dollars. So people could check out that episode. Um, Yuri Adoni is the author of Unstoppable Startup um, and Mastering Israel's Secret Rules of Chutzpah. So check that out and. Yossi Vardy, John Medved, many more. Check it out. Um, before I introduce today's guest, um, you know, I want to just uh, tell you this episode is brought to you by Rise25. I co-founded it with my business partner, Jen Corcoran. And what we do is we help businesses connect to their Dream 100 partnerships, clients, and we help you run your podcast. So, you know, for me, Ron, the number one thing in my life is relationships. So I'm always looking at a way to give to my best relationships, put them on a platform, their thought leadership and let them give them a platform to talk about what they're working on and uh podcasting over the past 10 years has been the best way that i've been able to share other people's companies and thought leadership with the world so um if you have questions about starting your own podcast you can go to rise25.com i won't go into the longer explanation ron which is it was really inspired by my grandfather who was a holocaust survivor so if you're interested in that story you can go to inspiredinsider.com slash the about page and the full interview that the, the uh, Holocaust Foundation did with him is on that page. So uh, check it out. Uh, today's guest, Ron Korber, is co-founder and CEO at um, Brizometer or Brizometer, however you want to pronounce it, the leading air quality analytic company. And it's one of Israel's top startups and has almost 100 million daily users through their customers, which include companies like Dyson, L'Oreal, Bosch, Unilever, and many, many more. You can check it out at um, B-R-E-E-Z-O meter, M-E-T-E-R.com. And Ron, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much. You know, you were saying before we got, we'll talk about, you know, what's going on in the world. And there's always something going on in the world right now. You know, there's fires in California, there's you know, COVID is going on as we're talking and um, always a need for air quality. You know, it's like one of those things um, you, you take it for granted until you don't have it, like actually breathing air. Right. And so um, you, I'll talk about what the company did, how you founded it. But you mentioned, Jeremy, I may be coughing because <laughs> I came down, you know, I'm, my family and I had COVID. And yes, just talk briefly because it kind of transitions into why air is so important and and causing respiratory <coughs> issues and kind of stems from the how why you started this company in the first place and you're actually at risk because of some of the the predispositions yeah. you have. So what what was your experience with COVID? Yeah. So so we were infected. Uh, my wife was infected from one of her colleagues at work, and and. Until we found out about him being sick, the entire family was was sick. Uh, so first of all, luckily for us, uh, my two kids didn't had any symptoms. Uh, so thanks God for for that. Uh, my wife had very light symptoms, like she basically had three days of only fevers. She was tired a little bit, but after three days, she was fine. And I, on the other hand, I, I had severe symptoms. Uh, that means that for, uh, I, I was sick for almost 10 days. Uh, uh, I was, it was very hard for me to breathe. I literally couldn't breathe like I usually breathe. At some point, the oxygen level uh, was uh, very low and, and was kind of risk my, my life. Uh, after uh, after three days, and I have to say this is uh, the worst disease I ever had. I am a healthy man. I how I I didn't I don't think I ever met my personal doctor. I never I basically am one of those people that almost never sick. Uh, so uh, after uh, three days of very severe symptoms and almost uh, unable to breathe, can't w- get out of bed. My legs hurt. All the all my body hurt. 
uh, I uh, took some action, decided that I can't wait to go to the hospital. And, and my doctors didn't feel that it's severe enough to go to the hospital because the hospitals are full all over, like in every major city, all over the world, probably because of COVID, because of the winter that is now coming. Uh, so I took action by myself. I rented the oxygen generator and I also bought an inhalation machine and Ventolin. And I basically treated myself. So uh, what did that look like? Days, what did you do? Did you have like a mask with oxygen on your? Yeah. Yeah. I, so I just, you know, I checked online uh, what can help people that are unable to breathe. Uh, we at Brusometer are working with leading pharmaceutical companies like AstraZeneca and ALK and ResMed. So we are very familiar with the treatment that companies provide to COPD patients and asthma patients. <clears throat> and based on my research, based on my experience, uh, uh, I uh, approach one of the medical devices companies that can, uh, that manufacture oxygen generators. Uh, I rented it for 100 bucks per month. Wow, that's uh, not, I was expecting <laughs> way more than that. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, uh, it's not that costly. It costs about $1,000 to acquire it. And if you want to rent it, it's about $100 uh, per month. Uh, it's from the moment I called the sales per person to the moment the oxygen generator was at my house. It took 30 minutes. Uh, wow, 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, those companies are used to work with hospitals and emergency units. So they have a great uh, customer's wow. experience. Uh, and from the moment I started monitoring the oxygen level and started using the oxygen generator, uh, this is the moment I started the healing process. Uh, one day after using the oxygen generator, I could walk, I could speak again. Wow. And three days afterwards, I was uh, totally recovered yeah. and that was great. That's amazing because, you know, what's, what's scary is you know, you have a background in this and you have the wherewithal to find it. And most people don't are in that range of, well, I'm not quite ready to go to the hospital, but I'm really, it's really, it's hard to breathe. So, yeah. um, so thanks for sharing that. Uh, you should, you should, that should be like a blog post on Brazometer is like how I survived COVID and uh, here are like the five steps. Um, but Talk to people, what, is, what was you know, the original idea for Brazometer and what, what do you do? <coughs> yeah, so the original story of uh, founding uh, Brazometer also is a personal story of mine. So first of all, I'm an environmental engineer. Besides being a COVID survivor, I'm also <laughs> an, an environmental new... engineer. Bro, I'm going to uh, your, change your LinkedIn <laughs> instead of CEO and co-founder of Brazometer. Just COVID yeah. survivor. That's it. <laughs> So, uh, so I am an environmental engineer. I studied environmental engineering at the Technion, which is kind of the Israeli MIT uh, for almost 10 years. And I also, worked, uh, I also worked for almost a decade in one of the biggest chemical companies in the world, Israeli Chemicals. I was there in charge of reducing all the environmental effect, the environmental impact of manufacturing chemicals in, in, chemical, uh, in Israel chemicals. And in 2012, after working for 10 years uh, at ICL, uh, me and my wife finally saved enough money to buy our first house. Uh, my wife is asthmatic. And at that time she was pregnant with the first child. As an environmental engineer, I knew that short-term exposure to air pollution, short-term It's interesting means, around that she's asthmatic yeah, she didn't have a severe case, which I would expect the opposite. I would expect you to you to not have a severe case. Yeah, the, the reason is that I I I had a cold when I got infected with COVID. Mm. I, I I didn't plan to have uh, COVID when I got the cold, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so so I was more vulnerable at the point of time when COVID hit us. Yeah, got it. So you're looking for a house. She's as mad. <clears throat> yeah. So. So again, it's also thanks God that she didn't have severe symptoms because otherwise that could have been a, a quite different adventure. Uh, so, so she is asthmatic. She was pregnant with her first child. As an environmental engineer, I knew that short-term exposure to air pollution can increase the risk for premature birth, 
increase the risk for having an asthma attack that might risk her and the baby. And of course, I wanted to protect my wife. I wanted to protect my uh, family. And what we decided is that we will also try to understand what is the air pollution in different locations where we are buying a house. And surprisingly, there was no information which we could use. And again, I'm an environmental engineer at that time. I work in a big uh, chemical uh, company. I, my colleagues are people, officials that are working in the Ministry of Environmental Protection. And I contact them with a very simple question. Where is the cleanest place to live in Israel, <laughs> in north of Israel? Uh, there was no answer. And what we decided, me and my co-founders, Emil Fischer and Ziv Lautman, we decided that we will take this project and we developed very sophisticated algorithms that are capable of forecasting and monitoring air pollution uh, globally. And from that story, of course, uh, Vrizometer was founded. So originally, what was your thought about the product or who your, <coughs> your clients, customers were going to be? Yeah, so what we learned uh, very, uh, the very early stage, uh, basically while still developing the first algorithm to allow me to choose the best, cleanest place to live, what we learned is that air pollution is not only a challenge in Israel, it's a, cho it's a challenge globally in almost every major city around the world, whether it's in the United States, in Europe, in Asia Pacific, there are toxic pollutants in the air. And this challenge is actually so huge that according to the World Health Organization, air pollution is the single biggest environmental health crisis that we face today, which is linked to the death of more than 7 million people every year. And more than 90% of the world population is at risk from breathing those chemicals. And due to climate change, actually those environmental hazards, this air pollution is becoming even worse. For example, the wildfires in California that emit a lot of uh, pollution. So what we decided very early on at Brizometer is that if we go on this journey, if we take this big step and leave our daily jobs, our secure daily job, we will do it in order to really help improve the health of those billions of people who might be exposed to environmental hazards. At Brizometer, we understood that we need to establish a team and we established a team of experts in the fields of atmospheric science, environmental engineering, that works together with experts in the field of AI and machine learning and big data. And by combining these skills and technologies, we, are, we were able to develop the, those very sophisticated machine learning algorithms that can provide the most accurate micro-local air quality forecast and insights. And then there is the challenge of really approaching those billions of people, obviously, approaching and assisting billions of people, it's very challenging. What we decided very early on is that the best way to reach those billions of people as fast as possible is by joining, partnering with leading brands that have solutions to protect people from air pollution. Healthcare companies that have medical devices, for example, asthma inhalers or medicine to treat uh, uh, people that are allergic to pollen or uh, or, or companies that have skincare products to protect the health, the, the effect of uh, air pollution on the skin. So among our customers are some of the leading brands. Uh, you mentioned a few, L'Oreal, Dyson, Amway, AstraZeneca, Bosch, Unilever, to name those few. And thanks to our customers, every day, almost 100 million people can ha have access to very accurate air quality forecasts together with insights on how to avoid this air pollution and how to make informed decision, informed action to improve their health and to reduce the risk from those pollutants. So Ron, let's say, you know, Bosch, pre being, you know, <coughs> working with them, they're like, okay, Ron, we're interested. How does it work? How does it yeah. work to integrate with a Bosch? So uh, because we, we at Brizometer are one, we believe that people should have access, free access to air quality information. Our air quality information for 
people is free and available in a website or apps. <clears throat> but for companies that want to use our solution in their product, we have an API and those companies license our API pay mm. us to have access to our API, which allow them to integrate our forecast into their products. And among our customers, what is all common with L'Oreal and Bosch and Dyson and Mway and AstraZeneca is, and Weatherbug for, for example, is that all those companies have solutions, have services to protect people from those environmental hazards. And by showing our forecast, they notify their users or their patients in the case of healthcare companies like ALK, AstraZeneca and ResMed, whenever it's the right time and the right place to use their services, their devices in order to protect them, themselves and reduce the risk of having those respiratory symptoms. What would be an example <coughs> of a product that um, whatever product, it could be a Bosch or Unilever product that has the API integrated just from like the user perspective. The user may not even know it's in there, I imagine, right? Or would they? So, <laughs> if, they uh, if they will look, they will see that the data is powered by Bruzometer. Every one of our customers is obligated to provide attribution to Bruzometer, showing that the data is powered by Bruzometer. Not everyone really acknowledge that yeah. or recognize that. <clears throat> so a, a great example is, is Propeller Health by ResMed. So a, a Propeller Health is, is a startup that was recently acquired by ResMed, which is a California-based medical equipment company with about 2 billion of annual revenues. Uh, ResMed primarily uh, develop cloud connectable medical devices for the treatment of asthma, COPD, and other respiratory conditions. And Brizometer Insight Engine power Propeller app to provide very highly personalized predictive service that notify asthma and COPD patients whenever their personal asthma forecast might be poor. And this notification is based on their own history of symptoms and medication usage, along with brisometer environmental forecast, our air pollution forecast, our pollen uh, forecast, and the user basically gets those real-time notification on the right time to use the asthma inhaler or another device by ResMed in order to manage the symptoms to reduce the risk of having those respiratory symptoms. Mm. So it's giving them an alert. Basically, like all these factors are going to show you, you, know, you may be at risk here because there's pollen, there's fires around, the air quality is poor, so just be on the lookout <coughs> um, yeah. to possibly to possibly use this. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And another example in the fields of allergies, of seasonal allergies, and as you know, it's also a growing concern for, Mer for many Americans. Last year alone, there were almost 70 million seasonal allergy sufferers that took some sort of medication in order to uh, reduce the symptoms and manage uh, their allergies. So ALK is, is a pharmaceutical giant with sales of about $3 billion based in, in Denmark. And they uh, are using our air quality and pollen forecast in their app, which is called Clara, to create a personal exposure log. Using our API, they created this user experience in their consumer app when users can learn about the link between air quality and their allergies in a format that is intuitive and relevant for them. And they offer personalized recommendation to address the allergies before the symptoms can be experienced using their medication, using other devices or other products by other companies which they partnered with. For example, they, they also recommend purchasing an air purifier and so forth. You know, what's interesting is if they go, someone goes to your website, you could see a live map <coughs> ran of like, for instance, the, you know, the fires API and you could go in California and there's like a heat map there and you can kind of click and you can click around in different areas and find out the air quality. Um, yeah. That it's pretty, pretty interesting. Now I'm curious, 
um, you know, what uses have you found for the company and the technology that maybe when you first started, you had no idea this is what it'd be used for? So the, our, you know, I think our biggest surprise was working with uh, skincare companies. Uh, for example, among our customers is Clarence, L'Oreal, Dermalogica, which is one of Unilever brands. Uh, you need to understand, this is something very interesting. Air pollution is accelerating almost every disease. Basically, when we are discussing about air pollution, those pollutants sometimes are so small, they can enter into our bloodstream. And from there, they can go to the entire body, accelerating almost every disease. And there is a link between air pollution to almost every disease, to obesity, to melt mental illness, to uh, uh, being tired, to re redu reduced IQ, uh, to almost every disease. And also air pollution is also have negative uh, impacts on our skin. It's increased skin pigmentation. It's increased skin aging, which is like a trillion dollar market. And those companies developed products to protect people's skin from the urban environment. And L'Oreal, for example, has several apps. One of those uh, apps is My Skincare by uh, L'Oreal, which recommend the user which product by L'Oreal they should use based on brisometer uh, forecast. And they have different sets mm. of products which is, are very personal to your type of skin and also taking into account the environment that you might be exposed to. Yeah, I would not so, have guessed you know, Brazometer skincare company. That would be my first, <laughs> the Bosch, the Dyson, like, you know, they're, you know, <clears throat> up junk in yeah. your carpeting, you know, figuring out the, the impurities in, you know, kind of the air in the, in the floor. But uh, yeah, I did not picture the skincare companies. Yeah. So, it, you know, when also if you try to have a more high level view on that, and by the way, just my, the app by L'Oreal is My Skin Track, just to say the right name. So, so if, you, if you have a higher, higher view, we all understand that the weather impacts our health. And we obviously, humidity and UV impact our health as well as the skin health, of course, UV. So it's quite understandable and intuitive that also air pollution and pollen might impact people's health. And people that suffer from those seasonal aller allergies truly suffer from that. They don't only suffer from fatigue and they don't also only suffer from sneezing. They sometimes suffer from those skin pigmentation, skin irritation. And then there, those companies have their products to protect you in those cases, whether it's protecting your skin, protecting your lungs uh, and, and making you more healthy. How has uh, COVID in the kind of that pandemic <coughs> increased the awareness and conversations with certain companies that maybe you wouldn't have gotten in front of if it weren't COVID, but now they're paying attention to it. Has that happened for you? Yes. So uh, obviously COVID is impact people's health. This is why I'm coughing and it uh, is impacting their respiratory uh, system. Uh, what uh, many research, uh, researchers have found out, uh, for example, Harvard scientists uh, found out that is an increase in air pollution is associated with an increase of almost 10% in the COVID-19 death rate. And air pollution is a major factor in the risk to have severe symptoms like I had. And there is also a great overlap between the sensitive groups that in most risk from COVID and the sensitive groups at risk from air pollution, for example, asthma and COPD patients. And, and from March and from April, basically we experienced a surge in demand for our solutions, specifically from those healthcare companies, whether it's pharmaceutical companies, medical devices companies, or companies that, ha that develop digital solutions for the healthcare uh, 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 market. Uh, according to McKinsey, you probably uh, saw this report. According to McKinsey, 
the telehealth market might be grow might grow to uh, a, a market of over 250 billion dollar in the US alone due to covid so there is a great demand for our solution in those markets specifically now because of covid at those time when people are more concerned about their health at those time when people are more concerned about what we are breathing the uh, awareness about the air, uh, about air pollution and, and pollen and other environmental hazards are uh, increasing. So for a typical user, not a Bosch, can people download an app or what, <coughs> what should a typical yeah. person like me do? Go to your site and what should I do? Or go to so, my, my app or my phone, what should I do? Yeah, so you can download our app for free for, you know, whether you have an Android or uh, iOS device uh, and once, once you download the, the app you will get real-time notifications on air pollution events that might risk your health or your loved one's health at specific locations which you can which you set which can be your children's school your parents house your house and so forth you will get alerts not only on, on high levels of air pollution you will also get alert about fires which you know is, is very important specifically if you live in areas like in california or people that live in australia or in israel uh, warm areas uh, so you also get those alerts at brisometer we are trying to save people lives as well uh, you will also be able to see the pollen forecast and plan ahead in case you are uh, you suffer from seasonal allergies and and basically you can use that to improve your health something very important about those environmental hazards so on the one hand those are probably the biggest challenges humanity is facing and that's not enough those environmental hazards most of the time are invisible i'm obviously not the fires but pollen and air pollution are most of the time invisible most of the time you can't see them most of the time you can't smell them you obviously can't hear them or touch them and for us humans it's very hard to avoid something or take action against something we are not able to detect with our senses and this is where brisometer come in and make the invisible visible by providing those forecasts and fortunately for us the solution to protect ourselves from those environmental hazards are very simple. Once you acknowledge the air pollution that you are, you are, you are exposed to, you can take those very small informed action, for example, close the windows, for example, turn on the air purifier, buy an air purifier and turn on the air purifier. You can choose the cleanest park to take your kids outside. You can choose the cleanest route to do outdoor activity, jogging. Uh, you can choose the cleanest place to, to buy a house uh, and so forth. And by that, you can improve significantly your health. And again, it's not taking to COVID. I was never sick. Yeah, COVID is a different uh, uh, topic, of course. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I want to hear about, you know, around who should be using you, what companies <coughs> should be using you that are not, that they should be thinking about integrating uh, with you. But I'm, I'm just going to show, like, I don't know if anyone could see this. If you're watching the video, I download, I download the app and you could see where I am. It says 72, Good. usually at this time, but moderate, it's 58. So, um, and then there's a bunch of other features here, like the pollen count and the, and the weather and everything like that. So it's kind of interesting. <coughs> yeah. The, um, but who should be you? What company should be looking to integrate with you to provide this data for people? Yeah. So, you know, generally speaking and, and, you know, everyone. So we are always breathing and the air that we breathe always have an impact on our health and it should be on top of mind, whatever you're doing. Specifically now, our main focus is the healthcare uh, uh, segment and specifically companies that have products to protect uh, people from respiratory symptoms. Uh, another uh, uh, market are companies in the, that manufacture HVAC or air purifiers. 
uh, or companies that have other services to protect people uh, from air pollution. Uh, we, are also, we also have some customers in, uh, from the mobility market, automotive companies. Yeah. So uh, that's I what I was actually, when, when, yeah. you, when I was asking that, my mind goes to something like that, like automotive, because I feel like they're able to get a lot of different <coughs> data when they move around. So, yeah. you know, you can gather a lot of data if it's in a car over a period of time. I mean, I guess, you know, maybe, maybe Waze should just integrate with you. And that way, when someone downloads the Waze, it's just on people's phones and they're driving. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I told that to Uri Levin. Uh, <laughs> so maybe, maybe, maybe in the future. So, so yeah, when, when you are driving your car and people, that, you know, it's, it's now that I will say that it will look intuitive, but people sometimes forget that when you're driving in your car, you are actually exposed to the most harmful air pollution ever because you're literally breathing the exhaust of the car in front of you. And at the same time that you are exposed to those very dangerous chemicals, actually, you know, it's very simple to take some action and, and, and make sure you're protected because in every car, there is an air purifier in, in every car manufactured from 2014, for example. In every car, there is an HVAC system that can filter most of those particular matters, most of the traffic related uh, pollution. Also air pollution is very dynamic. It can be completely different every few meters mm. and can be also completely different every few minutes or a couple of hours. So when you're driving your car, you can plan ahead your route in order to avoid those dangerous chemicals. You can uh, uh, acknowledge what will be the air pollution forecast in your destination and might change the destination or change the route. So actually you have many actions that you can do in order to avoid air pollution. Another thing relates to air pollution and, 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 and automotive is that air pollution and pollen, when you are driving are not only health risk, they're also safety risk. It has been scientifically proven that air pollution, being exposed to air pollution, being exposed to pollen can increase the risk of having car accident because you, you know, you are more tired, you are less concentrated, your IQ drop because of those chemicals that enter into your bloodstream and into your brain. And therefore you are more at risk to have a car accident. So it's a big, big challenge. And there is a solution because of the air purifier in the car and all the actions that that you can take. And this is why among our customers are also automotive companies, for example, yeah. Tata. Yeah. So Tesla would be a good <coughs> type of partner. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. With their biohazard mode, definitely. Um, well, I'm curious just personally for you, Ron, what are um, health apps that you like? So obviously you have the Brazometer app yeah, on your course. phone. What other, what other apps do you use from a health perspective? Yeah, so or, or non health, even, but start with health. Could be yeah, product, so, productivity as a busy founder. Yeah, <laughs> so you know, we we uh, you know, the great advantage of working at Bruzometer is that you are exposed to all those services and and products that can help you better manage your health. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm a big fan of the Dyson air purifier and, and the Blue Air by Unilever air purifier, which is, of course, powered by our solution. So whenever the air quality outside might be substandard, using our forecast, the Dyson air purifier or the Blue Air air purifier turn on automatically. So you, basically, mm -hmm. you need to buy the air purifier connected to a Wi-Fi move it to auto mode and you are protected. You are becoming the hero of the house hmm. because the, the entire family will be protected and you get those forecasts in their apps. Uh, I, also, I also like a lot all trails for, for hiking. What uh, is it called? Is all trails? trails. Okay. Yes. For hiking, it's work. Uh, it's, they, it's a great app globally. It's, a, it's, a, it's an American company, but the apps uh, is available globally. And it's a great app for do outdoor activity, healthy outdoor activity, 
they are of course also one of our customers and and whenever you want to choose the the hiking route they allow you also to take into account the pollen forecast the air pollution forecast they will uh, give you alerts in the case of fires mm -hmm. obviously you don't want to go yeah. into a fire i just want to know about bears that's that, that. <laughs> 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 That's also a big health and safety risk. Exactly. <laughs> um, Colin's like third on my list to bear and fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and, and you know, working with Dermalogica in L'Oreal, I learned a lot about uh, how uh, the environment impacts our skin and, and, you know, skin pigmentation and skin irritation. It sometimes looks like a minor problem, and, but remember that when you have this very small health problem, that's the only thing you can think about all day long. Yeah. So if you have a solution for that, and L'Oreal and Dermalogica have very nice and, and not so expensive solutions, suddenly, you know, your, your skin is more healthy and, and, you know, you basically have a, a better life. Yeah. So all trails, you have a Dyson app, what other apps, any other health apps that you use? Uh, and, you know, for running, I like also Runtastic. Runtastic, uh, okay. Yes, by Adidas. Okay. Uh, they, were, they were recently acquired by uh, Adidas. Nice. Uh, yeah. Um, just just um, repeat again the Dyson. What are the air purifiers you recommend that are, are powered by Brazometer? Just for, I, I wrote down, there's a specific model of Dyson or? Yeah, so... Uh, so among our uh, air purifier customers are uh, Unilever, and Unilever, one of their brands is Blue Air. Uh, Blue that Air, okay. Yeah, that manufacture those air purifiers. Uh, uh, before and after would be cool with the app, like before you get it, right? You put the app on, you detect it, and then afterwards, like if you go on your you know, solutions air purification smart home, page on a brazometer, everyone could go on B-R-E-E-Z-O meter.com and they have, you know, solutions tab, which goes to air purification. You kind of see air pollution, the pollen, there's like a heat map. Um, it's kind of interesting um, as far as, you know, what would be the before and after you actually install one of these things, right? The, the before and after once yeah, you install like, yeah, you have the app and, Yeah, you have the app and then you install it um, because I'm looking on it, it says like living room, 92, you know, 92 exactly. and outside yeah. it's like eight out of a hundred. So it's exactly. Yeah, exactly. So Dyson call it the clean effect. So you, once you purchase the air purifier, you need to remember that air pollution is invisible. You might be experiencing bad symptoms, fatigue or, or respiratory symptoms because of air pollution, but you can't see the air pollution. So in the Dyson app or the Blue Air app, you can, you can see the outdoor air pollution, which can be sometimes a, a high air pollution levels. But once you turn on the air purifier, you will see that in your house, the air pollution is becoming better. The air quality is becoming better. Right. So then you have this clean effect in which you see that outside the air pollution levels are high. And inside, you're protected, and the air quality is good. And then you can really understand the value of the $500, $400 device uh, that, that you bought, and obviously that gives you the acknowledgement, and, and actually you want to use it more. You become the hero of the house. You want to, you want to make sure that you have air purifier in every bedroom to protect the kids, to protect uh, uh, the, your loved ones. And this is, this is exactly one of the advantages of using our solution uh, within those products. I want to buy it right off your site. I don't think you have it available. <laughs> no. I mean, because no. it makes me, you know, it makes me think, you know, Ron, really, if, some, if a company is going to invest in the, that technology and care that much to, you know, incorporate that, then it's, they're going to want to make a high quality product in general. You know, it just tells me something about their mission and their purpose and not just that, but like what they're willing to do to go the extra mile. Cause they don't have to do that, but they choose to because it's, it's going to help the consumer and it's actually monitoring things. So I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm, I want, I'm giving you feedback. I want a 
here's what we're powered by so I can click purchase that actual air purifier from Dyson because I know it has your technology in it that's going to measure things. I think right yeah. now I can't do that, right? No, for now, for now, no. Uh, maybe, maybe in the future, maybe it's a, it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a possibility in, in the future, but you're actually right, you know, in, in the sense of the value that we provide to our customers, we enable those manufacturers to create a more personalized customer experience, mm -hmm. which allow them to increase sales, increase a, a engagement. And when you increase engagement with those yeah. products, you improve people's health for yeah. sure. Yeah, because so now I have to hunt around products. online to find those products to ah, possibly it's easy. get them from my house. Yeah, it's easy. Dyson.com <laughs> and you will get it ASAP. No, I want to go to your site. Um, <laughs> you know, talk about the team. You know, creating a team like this and taking like amazing data scientists, like actual scientists away from whatever they were working on and bringing them on, <coughs> on board. Yeah, so as I mentioned, we establish a team of experts in the field of atmospheric science, environmental engineering that works together with experts in the fields of big data, machine learning, and AI. And by combining those skills, we can provide the most accurate micro color quality focus and insights. And it's, it's quite interesting. Basically, those team of experts came from all over the world. Our chief scientist used to work at NOAA before joining a, a bruisometer. Uh, recently, we, uh, we recruited uh, another scientist that came from uh, Germany uh, that had a, a, a lot of experience about atmospheric science and, and, and air pollution dispersion uh, algorithms. And what is actually very interesting is that the environmental engineers, the atmospheric scientists that work at Brizometer little by little from, you know, after working for a couple of years at Brizometer, they became more like an algorithmic engineers, like a software engineers. Mm. And the software engineers learned so much about air pollution and atmospheric science and air pollution dispersion and, and, and weather that they become sort of experts in the field of uh, atmospheric science. And it's great to see how those different skills merge to create those amazing products. How did you meet your co-founder, Emil? <laughs> so Emil is one of my uh, best friends. We met uh, uh, for the first time in the age of 14 in high school in uh, Kiryat Yam, uh, which is a city near Haifa. Uh, Emil was uh, my best man when I got married. We were, you know, at the same time in the army. We were at the Technion at the same time. But while I studied environmental engineering, Emil studied uh, software engineering. And actually, it's a very interesting story. So at the beginning, it was me and, and Ziv. Ziv is another, is also an environmental engineer. He's now doing his PhD in Stanford. And we realized very early on that we need a software engineer to fill the team and, and really to develop the technology because we had those algorithms, but the algorithms weren't scalable enough to create a real product that can be used by millions of people. So basically what we did is we, we wrote what can be the perfect CTO, the perfect co-founder, the perfect software engineer that can join as a co-founder and, and CTO for the company. And we list, there was a, like a very long list of like 40 uh, 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 criteria that we are looking into this perfect man. And once we finish reading that, I said, ah, I meet, I, I know this guy. It's Emil. He's my best friend. Mm. And, and I approached Emil. Luckily for us, Emil uh, was also super excited about the product. Emil is also asthmatic, so I, I you know, uh, he's also very passionate right. about uh, helping other uh, asthma patients, and he joined the team. You know, Ron, I want to, first of all, thank you. I have two last questions, but I want to thank you for sharing your knowledge and for what you do. You know, it's not a, it's not a easy undertaking to do this, you. you know, and so everyone, I want to encourage them to check out brezometer.com, um, B-R-E-E-Z-O meter.com, download the app, 
on your phone, whether it's iPhone, Android. Um, I'm one of the few Android users right now. Um, so check it out. Um, two last questions I always ask because it's Inspired Insider is one, what's been a challenging point, a low moment that you had to push through? Because, you know, as you know, like running a company, starting a company is a roller coaster. It can be. Um, and then two, what's on the flip side been, you know, a proud moment for <coughs> you? So maybe start with um, a challenging time. Yeah. So I think uh, this year actually gave me both <laughs> the mm. challenging times and the times that I am most proud of. So at the beginning of March, like everyone else, we recognize the market downturn. And like almost every company at that phase, except maybe Zoom, uh, we started working on a contingency plan to face uh, this challenge. Uh, the plan had you know, some guidelines which are obvious, for example, remote working and business continuity, uh, taking into account that we need to work from home. And at, at the same time, we also realized that the world is changing quickly. And while, you know, reducing the budget, reducing expenses, we also need to think about what can be the next opportunity for us. Uh, our compass at the company was always to invest in people and to improve people's health. Therefore, we decided, and that was a very challenging time, we decided that whatever we do, we will not let go even one of the team members. Uh, but we didn't have an enough sufficient cash flow for you know, 18 months, or, or, and, and at that time, we didn't know how much time this, uh, challenging, uh, this challenge will, will be. So that was quite a challenge, you know, where I faced um, some, some pressure from, you know, uh, board members to maybe, you know, uh, 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 ask people to leave. Uh, and we really believe, you know, that those critical times, this is the time when your culture is really built. And we also believe that in the new world, Bruzometer has a big part because from day one at Bruzometer, we were focused on improving people's health. And this pandemic is not only economic challenge, it's mainly a health, a health challenge. So obviously we have a, a, a role in, in the new world in, in, in this challenge. Luckily uh, for us, we found a way, we realized that uh, COVID, that air pollution is increasing significantly COVID-19 death rate is increasing significantly, the risk of COVID-19 severe symptoms, and we allocated our resources to focus on helping those healthcare giants to protect people, to provide recommendation for those sensitive groups that at risk from COVID on how to improve their health by uh, uh, taking into account the uh, outside environment. And we have grown and, and I'm happy that to say that now we are growing the team, we are recruiting people, the, uh, we increased our revenues and all in terms of every SaaS metrics, this is our best year so far. So from those very challenging times, actually, uh, uh, we uh, now experiencing some of our best times. Uh, in terms of in terms of the business, uh, and and I'm very proud to say that we overcame it with the same team, and and everybody are more motivated and more passionate than ever. I want to be the first one to thank you, on Everyone, check out brizometer.com, and uh, thank you again. Thank you so much. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.